Hi everyone, this is For the Love of Comics and in this episode we are going to investigate A Treasury of Victorian Murder, written, drawn and handsomely lettered by Rick Geary. A Treasury of Victorian Murder is the name given to the collection of these nine separate books, each of which presents a true life account of an infamous act or acts of murder in the 19th century. We'll briefly talk about and look inside each of these books, every one of which is a delightful mixture of heinous crime and sly comic storytelling. So let's dive into all of A Treasury of Victorian Murder by Rick Geary. A Treasury of Victorian Murder is, in fact, the name of the first book in the series. It was published in 1987 by NBM and it was a collection of three short pieces. The first is the 10-page The Ryan Mystery, set in 1873, about a still unsolved case where a quiet man and his pious sister who lived together in New York City were found with their throats brutally cut. The next is the 30-page story The Crimes of Dr. E. W. Pritchard, about a Glasgow doctor who poisoned his wife and mother-in-law in 1865 and was executed publicly after being found guilty. And the final story is the abominable Mrs. Piercy, the story of Mary Piercy, who was accused of, found guilty of, and executed for the murders of her lover's wife and infant daughter in 1890. Along with these early stories, the treasury also contains a brief introduction to the Victorian age, featuring a portrait of the Queen, celebrated events of the Victorian age, which include the publication of the Communist Manifesto and the Origin of the Species, the reduction of working hours for women and children to a maximum of 10 hours per day, and the first use of fingerprint analysis in criminal investigation. There's also a gallery of illustrious personages of the Victorian age, including statesmen, explorers and innovators, luminaries from literature and the arts, and two pages of murderers and murderesses. And to round out the quick picture of this era, Geary gives us two double page spreads showing Piccadilly Circus and a Victorian cemetery, highlighting in the text the roles of commerce, mercantilism and prosperity, as well as the presence of death in the psyche of Victorian society. And this really sets up everything that Geary's subsequent stories in the treasury will be interested in and shine a light on. Social mores, repression and hypocrisy will clash with ambition, aspiration and dreams of wealth and nascent media like newspapers will play an increasingly potent role in providing both entertainment and opinion. I don't have a copy of that original book, although it has been reprinted recently. Instead, I own it as part of a collected edition, A Treasury of Victorian Murder Compendium, which includes the original three stories and historical comics notes with three later books in the series. But after that 1987 book, it would be eight years before Rick Geary and NBM added to this treasury. That came with Jack the Ripper in 1995. This was a full-length book and with the slim volume about one of history's most notorious and mysterious killers and the label A Treasury of Victorian Murder serving as a series title above, it essentially launched the series which would now see a book every two years or so and for the last three a book a year for the next 12 years until 2007. Jack the Ripper is perhaps Geary's darkest book with deep and dark inks, thick lines and plenty of shadows as befitting the story. It also contains a narrative device in the form of being told to us, the reader, from the point of view of an unnamed gentleman who is reading about the murders in the daily newspaper and is playing at being a sleuth in piecing the mystery together. The story remains heavily fact-based though and although Geary would use such devices a couple more times in his early books, he would soon settle down on a more omniscient and tongue-in-cheek narrative style though always remaining very research and fact-based. Jack the Ripper is still a claustrophobic and chilling account, especially due to the lack of manufactured melodrama and Hollywood stylization. The same techniques and approach continued with The Borden Tragedy, published in 1997. This story takes an epistolary form, that is, in the form of letters, here being written by a friend of the accused, Lizzie Borden, who stood trial for the axe murders of her parents in 1892 Massachusetts. And although Lizzie was acquitted due to insufficient evidence, many in the massive public pool who breathlessly followed the case were not sure that justice had been done. Again, Rick Geary places his readers a bit of a distance away, allowing us to get only facts while still being immersed in his art and low-key presentation. 
This allows us to come up with our own impressions of the case while also being subtly manipulated first one way then the other by Rick Geary's careful selection and juxtaposition of facts, scenes and quotes. Geary's skill at juxtapositioning one fact next to another is most pyrotechnically displayed in his next book in the series, Fatal Bullet, published in 1999, about the second US presidential assassination, that of James Garfield, in 1881. Geary tells parallel stories, that of President Garfield and his assassin Charles Guiteau, showing how different their upbringings, goals, achievements and legacies were. And even though he sticks to the facts, as always, Geary's side-by-side -side presentation is highly potent. On one side, you have a delusional, shiftless failure's life, someone who squandered every opportunity he got until he ended up killing a president over an imagined slight. And on the other, you have an educated, accomplished man who rose above his humble origins to briefly occupy the most powerful office in the country. There's no doubting the comparison implied as these two finally come together for their inevitable tragic meeting. And a side note, I don't own a copy of Fatal Bullet which I just discovered when making this video. I do have it as part of the same compendium that I showed before. Fatal Bullet was followed by the mystery of Mary Rogers in 2001. Here, Rick Geary reports on the story of Mary Rogers, a 21-year-old whose murder in 1841 in New York created a sensation of speculation and gossip and inspired the Edgar Allan Poe story, The Mystery of Marie Roger. Perhaps the most lurid in all of the cases in the Treasury, which is saying a lot, this is another fine example of how Rick Geary can tackle the most gruesome and distasteful of crimes without either glorifying all the gory gossip or shying away from the brutal facts. His clean and dispassionate narrative is perfect here, as is his bold and clear art, where our reader reactions are exactly what they need to be at this never solved case. We're shocked and horrified, but also curious and confused and perennially without a clean solution. Then in 2003, Rick Geary brought out The Beast of Chicago about H.H. H. Holmes, the world's first recorded serial killer. This is my personal favorite of the books in the treasury of Victorian murder, although several come close. And you can check out my quick review slash overview of it in this video linked above and in the description below. The murder of Abraham Lincoln about the first US presidential assassination in 1865 and probably the most famous murder of that era was published in 2005. Rick Geary's research shines in this story about a very well-known and covered murder and he is able to bring his inimitable style to bear on uncovering more about John Wilkes Booth and his motives than one usually hears. Again, the presentation is devoid of heated passion or moralizing or judgment which makes the crime and the society around it the true stars of the story which is where Geary excels continuously. The case of Madeline Smith was published the very next year, in 2006. This centered around a sensationalistic, or else, murder trial that took place in Glasgow in 1857, in which Madeline Smith, a rich socialite, was accused of poisoning to death her working-class lover after he threatened to expose their affair. Madeline Smith was eventually acquitted due to a lack of evidence, but Geary's skill is in making you doubt no matter what, and like with the Borden tragedy, he leaves you with many questions simply by having other questions answered with facts and reportage. 2007 saw the publication of the last book in the Treasury of Victorian Murder series by Rick Geary and NBN Publishers. The saga of the Bloody Benders about a homesteader immigrant family who set up an inn and murdered their Western Trail guests often for money, but sometimes apparently for just the thrill. And Saga is definitely the right word. Their crime spanned several years from 1870 to 1873 and included mounting suspicions, false claims and theories, and Wild West laws and justice. Yet the Bender family escaped before being arrested and their future remains shrouded in some mystery. Still, the evidence unearthed later, as well as the system of murder later deducted, are again wonderfully presented by Geary, much like he did in Beast of Chicago, and the drip of information and suspicion and action in the unconnected and anarchic world of 1870s Kansas gets under your skin. Looking at the entire treasury, it isn't hard to see the pattern that fascinates Rick Geary and the triumph of his accomplishment. Some of these stories continue to be infamous and widely discussed today. More of them are in the niche of historians and true crime buffs and scholars. However, at the time, these were sensations. Newspapers were just finding their audience and stories like these fascinated the general populace. People hung on to every lascivious detail, concocted theories, past judgments. Trials, when they happened, were reported upon in detail. 
the hypocrisy of condemning and judging and associating one type of behavior, say infidelity, with another, murder, is very cleverly highlighted in these books. But most of all, they serve to give us, through this elegant art in judiciously chosen language, a sense of being in that world. Like newsreel footage from a different era, the prejudices, fears, and lack of control present at the time are made crystal clear to us. And these books do a uniformly incisive job of going under the surface of 19th century England and the United States, while still being cheeky yet serious looks at very serious crimes. Rick Geary achieves something wonderful, transporting, informative and imaginative in a way that the best historians do by allowing us to relate to things from a long time ago by showing us that it's not that different after all. I'm really glad that Rick Geary and NBM brought out these books and I'm equally glad that they continued after 2007 with a treasury of 20th century murder. But that's another video for another time. I hope you enjoyed this look at nine books by one of my favorite writer artists working today. As always, I'd love to hear what you think in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, consider hitting that like button and checking out our current and upcoming videos. This has been For the Love of Comics. Thank you for watching.